Hey guys, welcome to this week's video. Today we are going to be looking at this controller, the Nectar Panorama P4, which is the same as the P6, only smaller. I actually wanted the P6 originally, but the music shop didn't have any, so I bought the P4 and have been really happy with the size. I, I don't think I needed the extra octaves and this fits nicely on my desk. But this has become one of my favorite MIDI controllers that I've had, that I've used. And the reason I bought it is because it was designed to integrate with Reason. It was like designed to be a Reason controller. Since then they've expanded their uh, mappings and stuff so it can be used effectively with a whole lot of DAWs. But I bought it to use specifically with Reason. It's got this dope motorized fader, which is sick. It's one of my favorite features about it. But what I've found, since I've been messing around in Reason and Ableton recently, I've been using Reason as more of a creative writing tool. And I found using this keyboard to do that has really, really changed my relationship with Reason. Anyway, let's let's get into the video. Let's make a beat and drink some coffee. Because music production is always better with coffee. Alright. Uh. I actually have no inspiration. I, I don't know what kind of beat I want to make today. Wow. I'm drawing a blank. Did you see that? Did you see the motorized fader move? So fun. When in doubt, start with a loop. I'm kind of feeling a percussion vibe. I like tablas. Does anyone else dig the tabla? That just, it's just such a fun. Right there. 75. So if I want to change the tempo on here, I hit transport. Turn this knob. You can change the tempo. It's really great. 75. All right. I'm not digging that table though. Ooh. Hello. One thing that I have found with this controller, this this is this is a pro tip for you. Uh, you have to have manual record off to really get the use out of it. Let's try to get a drum kit. I think we're gonna use the new Ripmac drum machine. Let's record a quick beat using that. Just want to add a layer. I can go back to transport, get a pre-count for one bar. Hit record, now I'm ready to go. Okay, so here's an interesting thing. If I go transport and hit looper, I can now use these pads to change the uh, I can use these pads to change the loop region and if you click link now I have a loop region that covers the whole lot that's really handy add some kick and snare new dub so I can use the solo button on the keyboard to um, solo the channel and if I decide, you know, it's too loud or needs to be louder, I can do that. Change the track, and you'll notice that based on the track that I've selected, the motorized fader moves, so it keeps up with the changes you're making. I find that really helpful when I'm composing like a beat or something. Drums are always Rip, we know this by now. Well, it sounds like a bit quantized, all of that. Just out of curiosity. I think I'm gonna leave it quantized. This is an interesting sounding beat as it is. I don't know if this is gonna turn into anything worthwhile. Reason's new bass synth, let's give that a crack. Honestly, I feel like every possible problem I've ever had with the MIDI controller I'm having right now 
as I'm trying to record this video. I guess that's one of the things with technology is that it doesn't always work. Okay, it goes, it goes and it, re it does this thing. I'd recorded that bass line and then it goes and it does this thing where it only records short notes. I feel like it's to do with it thinking there are two instances of the same controller. We're gonna restart the software and the controller. Okay, see? That is what is supposed to happen when one records notes on a MIDI controller. Let's try that again with everything. Yeah, okay, so that is an issue I've had a bunch. And when I did some research, it's something other people have had too. It's not distinct with this controller. I forgot exactly what causes it, but I feel like it's something to do with the computer thinking there are two instances of the controller or something, and I don't know, I'm not like, I'm not a tech guy. But we fixed it by restarting everything. Good, good solution when stuff's not working. I like what that mod wheel's doing to the sound. Let's, let's try and incorporate some of that in there. Timing out again. We'll get there, we'll get there. Now we got it. This time we got it. <sighs> okay, so now my model is not working. You can see it's not even uh, like I'm moving it here not doing anything in the software. To be fair, this is another issue that I have had on the regular with this controller. I actually emailed Nectar about it. I have not yet read the reply. All right, I have instructions that I need to follow. All right, Q operation. Figure out why the heck this mod wheel doesn't work. Please conduct the following test. Turn off your panorama. Okay, I can do that. Hold the internal. Internal. <laughs> Sucks if you got small hands. Move the mod wheel. The fader graphic on the panorama's display should follow the movement of the mod wheel. Ooh, you can see that the, the thing. And, and I'm moving the mod wheel, and nothing's happening. I'm moving the mod wheel. Nothing's happening. If the fader graphic, if the fader graphic does match the movement of the mod wheel, okay, it's it's not, it's not matching it. If the fader graphic does not move through its entire range of moving the mod wheel, the the, the problem maybe goes by having hundreds of guys. I can send you a replacement mod wheel with instructions on how to install it. That would be great. Could you please send me that replacement mod wheel? I must admit. I'm kind of uh, a little ashamed. It's taken me, it was May, June, July. It's taken me like four months to fix that issue. But if anything, making this video has made me go through my emails and figure out that my mod wheel is in fact broken. Back to, back to the video, back to making beats wherever we were at. Recording without the mod wheel. literally having every technical issue I could and I can't even play today. No, this, this is gonna be good, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Okay, so this allows us to show something interesting. If I do want mod wheel programming, but I don't have the mod wheel, what I can do is come over here, click on this, 
which is really hard to click on, I tell you. That's something that could definitely be improved on. Propeller head. Select mold wheel. And now I can draw individual mod wheel stuff over here. We'll just put a point there, put a point there, bring it back down here. Maybe I don't want quite that much. That's quite loud. But I like it. But it's loud. But I like it. This piece actually starting to sound okay. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not happy where this is going anymore. What are we, what are we feeling, guys? What's maybe some like plucks? Well, that's fun. There's a randomize button on the controls. But it's real cool being able to control the controls. From here, I can go to effects. Crank up that reverb and mount. Get a bit of volume. I really like that sound. That's sick. Possibly thinking that like A note there is a little dominant, so I want to reduce the velocity on that maybe by like 75% twice. I really like having the, all the transport controls here, the ability to turn like loop function on and off, play stop. You've got all these transport controls on the screen here um, that you use these knobs to change. So you can adjust like whether there's a pre count, the number of pre count bars, what the volume of the click is, what the tempo of the song is, where the left and right loop markers are, um, new dub takes, whatever. We talked before about how you can alter what sections of the song are looped using the uh, the beat pad. That's real handy. Um, and there you have a, a button up here for each of the main sections and reasons. So a button for your mixer, button for your um, your instrument. Um, most of them have mapping. Reasons your instruments don't have mapping yet, which is a pain. Yeah, this is how you browse through the tracks. Got your faders over there, your motorized fader, which is the business. Love that thing. I do like Nectar controllers. I have another foot pedal. Oh, I also have this foot pedal controller, which is pretty dope that I want to do some stuff with. I haven't got around to that yet either. One important thing that I noticed when using this controller is you have to have a track for every channel in your sequencer if you want the motorized fader to work correctly. I'm not sure exactly why that's the case. If I take my bases and put them in a group and call this uh, like bus bass this will mess with my motorized fader control and it won't map properly to the different channels because 
when I create a new bus, there isn't one that is automatically created in the sequencer. So what you have to do, whenever you create a new channel, for whatever reason, you've got to make sure that um, the yellow is here on the end. And you do that by going set remote base channel. So if you, if you did this and you went set remote base channel, then that one would have the yellow marker. So you have to make sure that yellow marker is on, on the one that's at the end. And then whatever channel you've added here, like if you're doing a, a parallel channel or a bus or something, a bus mainly I think, you just hit sequencer and that creates a channel. And that will fix all of the problems with your master fader not mapping correctly to the channels. So even though I don't have anything on this bus channel at the moment, it's still important that we keep one in the sequencer. The only thing I don't like about this controller is the fact that there are only a 3x4 grid with the drum pads. I feel like a 4x4 grid would be far more helpful because that's how beat pads usually work. There is a way around that, like in the software you can select whether the top row is controlling the third or the fourth line of a normal like Kong instrument, but it's still kind of annoying. So yeah, my 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 probably four pro tips currently for this controller would be if you're putting things in groups, make sure you've got a channel for that group in the sequencer, whether or not you are using it for, it for anything else. Make sure you have manual record off, it will reduce the need for you to use your keyboard and mouse and you can do far more stuff on the controller. If it does that glitchy thing where it cuts the note short or whatever, just restart everything and uh, make the most of that motorized fader because it's dope. Well that is it for the video today guys. This is how I've been using the controller to compose music and reason. I am really, really liking this controller approach to reason as opposed to programming notes. I'm finding Ableton way better for getting in and doing edits, but using a controller like this in reason is, is really changing the game. It's changing my relationship with reason. I am not a fan of the issues that I'm having with this controller and I find it highly amusing and ironic that basically all of the issues I've ever had with the controller happened in the one hour when I was trying to record a video about the controller. But if you haven't already subscribed, I'm going to be pumping out a whole lot more content. I want to try some different content. Let me know what controllers you use because I love this controller but I'm always interested in other stuff. I really want to try the able to push. I want to get one of those. Anyway guys, leave a comment down below. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And I will catch you next time. Mm-hmm.